Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about a few different foils that you probably didn't know was as expensive as they are. And when I looked at the list, I was quite surprised to see the current prices on many of them and that they have been this way for a while. Sheltering Ancient, which is an uncommon from Code Snap, it's a one and a green for a five five. Trample, cumulative upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on a creature and opponent controls. So cumulative upkeep means you can do this a ton. Now the foil price is $10. The non-foil is a bargain really for $1.74. I did not know this card existed, which is kind of funny because I did play during Coach Snap. The reason that it's so good is plus one plus one counters are trending up. And you might make alliance with somebody. Cumulative upkeep is interesting because this stacks like crazy. It just uh, it's going to provide so many plus one plus one counters. Next, let's talk about a card that does see play in modern, does see some play in legacy, and it is the spirit guide, which produces. You're not really going to play it out. You are just going to sack it and get your red mana, and then accelerate into something. It's about $7 non-foil, but the foil prices, if you can believe this, are close to $80. That is a huge, huge multiplier on this card, and it's probably the biggest multiplier I've seen on a common. So remember, this is a common. It's a pricey common, and I hope it will see a reprint. It would be beyond me if we did not get a reprint in Iconic Masters or 25th Anniversary, just given how expensive it is for common and how ridiculous it is in foil. So if you have a foil copy lying around, it is an $80 card that can pretty much trade for multiple. You can actually trade for a play set of the cheaper masterpieces, which is insane, right? Uh, next, we're gonna talk about another common. And this, the multiplier is far less than the Shaman, but it's still pretty interesting to talk about. The Devoted Druid, which is an eight to nine dollar card, is a thirty dollar foil. Yikes! Um, I I will be honest with you. I own some of these in foil, and I own quite a bit of them in non foil. I do hope that they get reprinted because one of the more spicy new modern decks involves the card. And I feel like more people could play the deck if the commons, common, if this was cheaper. So hopefully we get a reprint. Overall, it's just a good EDH card. It's just fantastic. I've always enjoyed it. I'm uh, playing it in standard, actually. It's one of the cards that I would go with the Quill Spike or Spike Quill or something like that. And you get infinitely big and then you attack with it. It's always a fun deck, right? I mean, that was one of the classic combo decks uh, back in this era of magic and I kind of miss it. I mean, it's not a combo that kills you, but it's just a fun little combo that goes infinite. Next, uh, Pallid Seeds. Now this is a little deceiving. It's not actually $40. There was a recent buyout, but it is probably more pricey than it should be. So it is a 55 cents non-foil and a $40 foil, but I think that's actually more, not accurate. I think it's probably around $10. But even then, that's a very big price difference. So the con to the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from the graveyard to your hand, or dragons at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Life gain and life loss. So that keyword is loss. Pretty much the reason this price, the card is going up in price is not because of the cons part, it's the dragon part. Those are very relevant today. Life loss is more relevant than it has been in the past because there are cards that trigger based on losing life. And overall, I mean, the fact that you can drain for life every single turn or every single one of your turns, right? Triggering multiple abilities sounds pretty good to me. All right, Unified Will. Uh, this card is $3 as a non-foil and 28 as a foil it is played widely played in merfolks uh, in modern it is considered one of the better counter spells in that deck 
when you think of blue, you don't really... Blue's not a, a deck that would really have more creatures than other colors, right? But in the Merfolk deck, it is. And we're seeing more Merfolks. We're seeing more and more of them. So it only makes sense that cards that support that modern deck type and cards that you know do a good job, hard to do a good job uh, being those placeholders, right? So this is, in a Merfolk deck, is probably better than Mana Leak, and you do want a two-mana counterspell, right? And it does that. Most of the times, it just acts as a regular counterspell with very little downside if you are a Merfolk deck. The exception being if they somehow board wipe you, and people are getting very excited for the new Merfolks in Ixlon, the Simic Merfolks. So uh, let's talk about this one. As you can see, the European price has not risen. This to this was like forty dollars, and now it's seventy four dollars. Hanging Back Walker is a good card. It is a very good card. A lot of these masterpieces, I feel like especially the ones that have not gotten gone up yet actually i was looking at it and the expeditions the lands which you would feel like is quite valuable they haven't moved at all and i have a here's what i believe this is very this type of masterpiece is appealing for edh players more than it is appealing for modern or eternal players and when you talk about land like a polluted delta or you know a any of the fetch lands they are not very it's like cool i play it for an instant then i crack it and then go to my graveyard and i never get to appreciate the art it's not in battlefield right so i think it actually doesn't make sense for an edh player to buy those as opposed to the caldas inventions which the cards are artifacts so they do get to be in the battlefield and people get to tell you how nice they look it's like you play a very fancy polluted delta you crack it and then it goes to your graveyard and then after you play your um thought sees or inquisition and then another card goes on top of it and no one ever sees it and can comment how awesome it is I, it's very illogical but I, I think some part of that is actually true next uh Burmaz, king kitty let's talk about his foil is 41 dollars. this would have been a amazing pickup before the cat deck was announced or even during the cat deck announcement forty dollars is a lot for this card uh do i believe it's gonna hold it might hold so all the cards that i have listed they are the top movers meaning that yesterday they were not at the current price they are today by anywhere between 50 to in palace seeds ten thousand percentage points of growth in a few days but brim ads is pretty obvious I don't really need to go over why this card has gone up. Cats, before he was not playable, now he is playable. Here's one that was surprising to me. Uh, Logic Knot is a 48 cents common, but it is a $15. It is a $15 foil common. Now, if you ask me why, I couldn't really tell you. I mean, it does have delve, and but at the same time you're double blue and you're delving to counter a spell maybe edh really likes it i cannot imagine there's something a modern deck that really wanted to play it because in multiples at least maybe as a singleton it would be very good but in multiples you're not going to have refill your graveyard every time right just so you can play this as a counter spell i don't know maybe someone can leave me a comment below because if this card was actually being played widely then the un then the non-foil price should also be higher than 48 cents, which for a future site common is actually quite cheap. Future site was not something that was printed very often. So it might be also a buyout. That might just be the logical conclusion that I am coming to right now. And lastly, Dragon Arc. Uh, this is a combination of the old artifact type, the black border. It looks very good and foil. It is a $28 $29 foil and only a $2.50 non-foil. Mm, it's questionable, like, if you wanted... So the other one is, what is it? Lion's Eye Am Amulet or something. Um, Amulet of Lion or something like that. The picture is a lion, but I don't think it's... Amulet of Summoning, which costs four, and then you pay four. Oh, Quicksilver Amulet. Yeah, I, why do I think Lion's... 
Anyway, because uh, it has a picture of a lion in one of them, the artwork, I believe. And you pay, play that turn four, then you pay four, and then you, you call a creature type, which would be tribal, and then out it goes. Belb's portal is five and three. This one is five and two. But it has to be a multicolored creature, which for dragons is like fine. I don't know. It's kind of a... I mean, if you believe this card is a real deal, then those two cards I just listed, Quicksilver Amulet, which has a reprint, and the Belbus Portal, which I don't know if it does have a reprint. It's from Nemesis, and it's not that pricey. They might be interesting speculations. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.